Coming up, a council committee hears good news on the leasing front for new businesses to take up tenancies in the Nicola Street precinct. Just who and when is still not confirmed. Plus, a review and a look ahead for planned entertainment and other activities in Tulma Place. It's Monday, April 5, 2021, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. The March 11 meeting of Ipswich City Council's committee overseeing the CBD redevelopment was provided with an update on the current number of leases likely to be executed around the Nicholas Street precinct. Chairperson of the Retail Sub-Project Committee, James Hepburn. And we had 11 leasing deals uh, in heads terms agreed or legals um, and since then I'm delighted to inform you that we have two new deals, uh, three new, sorry, um, one of which is a, a variation to an existing um, so that's one new tenant that would be moving into Eats and two into Metro B. And without divulging any commercials, um, they are best described as an all-day cafe offer, a large uh, bar and entertainment offer, and then um, a, a beauty salon. Um, if I step back from that and just look at the market in general, um, it's become quite transactional um, from speaking to some of the, the larger landlords out there, um, particularly in the food and beverage and leisure market, which exactly where we're, we're Aiming at, there's been um, a positive demand shift post-COVID. So to, to step back to last year, um, some of our delays, a majority of them have been around COVID. They've also been around us being unable to announce a cinema operator. And then there's the point in time where until really November, December last year, there was nothing really to look at. It was a big construction site with a lot of hoardings up. Now that's changed. There are spaces and places for people to visit and for tenant percent prospective tenants to go and look at. The previously delayed confirmation of a cinema operator is again looking hopeful after the closing of expressions of interest in March. And then we should hopefully go to a second round uh, and then be able to select an operator going into the middle of this year. Again, that post-COVID easing will um, bring us into, again, a more positive moment. So difficult to say right now, um, but as, as it is, we have uh, 12, 13 deals that... Um, are approved and going into legals and with the positivity around a cinema operator um, we should be closing these deals in the coming months. Mayor Theresa Harding asked Mr Hepburn about the feeling around the precinct. What's the the feeling? I mean I know at our last meeting there was a feeling of um, quite a lot of vigour and um, excitement back in the Nicholas Street precinct. What's Has that continued? Well, that's yeah, I think it most definitely has continued. Everyone that we bring up here and show around um, are gobsmacked with the, the, the quality of product that has been delivered um, and with the space that's going to be available mm. going into the future. Um, so I can, I can see that we're going to get people competing for space um, mm. when we get into the middle part towards the end of this year, particularly for the Metro B mm. um, and then the last remaining unit in the EATS phases. Mm. So um, it is, you know, assuming everything stays the same. And with the economy and, and with COVID, then, then we're moving into hopefully a very um, very good year. The Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee was also provided with an update on activation of Tulma Place since the official opening. Activation also includes live entertainment. Council Officer Alison Grant. It's been an exciting time for the precinct. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, really fabulous events this year, being um, our Switch Summer Sounds concert and also the Valentine's Day event, which was something a little bit different for the precinct in that we had the Ipswich um, City Orchestra there and the feedback was unbelievable. So we've down tools a little bit for a few weeks uh, to work on finishing the activation plan for the rest of the year, uh, which has been a fair bit of stakeholder negotiation and getting out and about and talking to community groups and event organisers. And we, I think we've got a a really impressive calendar locked in, um, certainly for the rest of this year and into the middle of next year. So aside from the special events that will hold uh, to mark all of the great milestones uh, in association with the precinct, um, we're talking to a very large gin festival, which we're all very excited about. Um, and with that festival working um, with local traders, local restaurants, um, you know, local food providers to make sure that, you know, we're making that very much a community event. Uh, we've just finalised a farmer's market um, coming to the precinct, working 
working with some people that have businesses within Ipswich. At that, um, at this point, we're looking at twice a week, um, sorry, twice a month on Sundays. And when we're set up with our new council administration building, we're possibly looking at uh, midweek markets as they do in Brisbane. Um, we've got lots of community partnerships coming up in the space. So we're really proud to be working with DVAC and holding um, a remembrance vigil uh, for them in May. Uh, we're working with the Ipswich Circus, bringing them in to participate in a number of our events. Uh, Harmony Week, again, really proud to be supporting that. So we're also working with the citywide events team to look at how we can execute those incredible events that we've brought into the city and deliver that in the Nicholas Street precinct. So from an activation perspective, there's certainly a lot coming up between now and the rest of the year. The committee heard that businesses in and around the precinct are being kept informed about events and any possibility of involvement. Alison Grant once again. So um, we're obviously keeping them um, up to date about all of the events that, that we're holding and looking for synergies where we can. So, um, you know, if we can support a business there um, and use their services, for example, the bakery, we have done that, you know, with some of our events. So we're trying to support them certainly as much as we can. One of the events coming soon will be a secret laneway series centred on Nicholas Street. Mayor Teresa Harding from the same meeting. If I can just get very excited. <laughs> I'm really, um, thank you to the team, Ms Grant and your team, but the, the 21, 2021 events calendar is incredibly exciting and not just for the gin festival, but also the return of the kitchen, the switch. My daughter was crowned the queen of the kitchen, the switch a few years ago. So uh, seeing that vintage festival come back is absolutely amazing. But yeah, I'm really impressed with the, the calendar that you've, you've mapped out uh, here. And, and obviously the, the tantalizer you've given us here for the, the secret laneway series, It'd be wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank yeah. you, Chair. I know that you spend a lot of time <laughs> outside of committee uh, working with the team, so thank you. At the March 25 Council meeting, Deputy Mayor Marnie Doyle echoed some comments made at the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee held earlier in March. So I, I'm, I'm delighted by the, the interest um, that's being uh, expressed by prospective tenants and the show of confidence um, within our um, revitalised Ipswich CBD. So I look forward to being in a position to share the finer detail. I know residents are chomping at the bit to, to learn who the new tenants might be down in the Nicholas Street precinct. So as soon as we're able to share those details, we, we absolutely will. Um, the other highlight, I'd just like to call out um, the Nicholas Street uh, precinct communications engagement and activation monthly report. Uh, that's the report that um, gives us an update on the activation down in the precinct and, and the events. And you know, yet again on the weekend we hosted um, a food truck um, a event and it was um, a resounding success. And it's just um, wonderful to see so many families out enjoying the entertainment on the stage. Uh, and enjoying uh, the food and just the venue generally. Um, just like to commend staff. Um, these events are happening almost every week and to date we haven't had any huge teething problems, which you would normally expect um, with a project mm. of this size. Yes, the, the, that Future Flavours was very popular on the weekend. And I know in the report there's some tantalising details of, of what's to come too, isn't it? Um, the Tulma Tapas, the, the Gin Festival, the monthly secret laneway series, and a whole heap of other the Spark Festival. It's very exciting. Yes, Mayor, the monthly, uh, the, the laneway uh, event uh, is top secret. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that will be an exciting event for, for residents. So there, there's lots of um, exciting um, events coming up. And, and again, the space is being activated um, as it was intended as, you know, a food and entertainment precinct. You'll find handy links in the show notes for council meetings and agendas, council's YouTube channel and current works program. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the Donate button at the bottom of the page.
You can follow this podcast on your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today from your smart speaker. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thanks for listening.